there's one driver we should all really feel sorry for. It should be the likes of Pierre Gasly. Or should we feel sorry? Because maybe at Alpine, he's pulled a blinder of a move. Or he's blindly walking out of Formula One. It's hard not to feel sorry for Pierre Gasly. Had he not been so desperate to impress against Max Verstappen in 2019 and made a bad impression seemingly amongst his side of the garage, I may not be here making this video. I may be making a video about Pierre Gasly winning the world title. Now, five years later, we have seen the likes of a complete driver who has bagged quite a few podiums, bagged an emotional win at Monza, and becoming Team Minardi's most successful driver ever. I'm pretty sure that somewhere in Faenza, there's probably somewhere a little monument to Pierre Gasly, be it in some kind of statue form or just somewhere in a pizza restaurant or some kind of chair or bench somebody out there in that city is tributing Pierre Gasly. He's now stuck at a French team which is currently having an identity crisis and with a teammate that he has publicly admitted that he doesn't see eye to eye with. Now many people including myself were wondering about which one of the two would survive the Alpine axe and survive for 2025 but quite frankly I think that discussion is completely and utterly irrelevant now because we already know what's going to happen. Pierre has already won. And it's all to do once again with Pierre Gasly playing the team game and Esteban not. Esteban Ocon mentioned that he's still somewhat associated with Mercedes, saying that he has links to the mark that are strong and that are no secret. And when you get a driver that is outwardly clucking on about the fact that he's connected to Mercedes and that he has a chance of getting the Mercedes seat that Lewis Hamilton has vacated, that kind of rhetoric is just screaming out to the grid, I'm available, get me out of here, come on, talk to me. Only with a French accent, obviously, but I didn't want to be, you know, insensitive. But I can understand why he's talking in this manner, because things at Alpine have changed considerably since he bagged his first win at the Hungara Ring in 2021. Alpine looked like a very solid front runner stroke midfield team that they could bag podiums fairly regularly. Maybe they could challenge for a win if the circumstances are right. It wouldn't be impossible. But now, pretty much Anything is impossible with the likes of the Alpine car of 2024, and I reckon that Esteban Ocon has probably had enough of being loyal to that team, and even though he has been there for now five seasons, maybe it's time for a change of scene. It would be perfectly reasonable for him to move to another team, since Alpine have drastically fallen to the back in the space of just a few months. Because quite frankly, the chances of him scoring a point right now are practically zero, despite the fact we saw flickers of hope in Melbourne when both drivers were in the points for a very brief time, and had things gone about in a different way, they might have actually stood a chance to maybe have a chance at getting 10th place, but we could easily say that with pretty much any of the bottom five teams. Sauber looked likely to score a point, and Williams at one point looked like they were going to score a point, and there are so many points to point out that there wouldn't be any point to labour the point. And I think for all of that, I deserve a brownie point. When you get Esteban Ocon sort of likening his time out at the Australian Grand Prix to times when he was at Manor in 2016, you've got a driver who is quite unhappy and probably is looking for the exit, seeing no real signs of hope of things changing at the Enstone team anytime soon. For me, it just simply doesn't matter about which one of them stays because I think I already know the answer. They've made their intentions very clear. Whilst Ocon is positioning himself to try his luck at another team, ideally for him Mercedes because Alpine are languishing near the back and he's got no chance of scoring podiums or major points, the other driver is not doing that and instead he is playing the long game, seeing value in Alpine despite the short-term pain that he is obviously going through right now, that the team is not looking likely to be scoring major points, sort of like what McLaren were doing last year, and believing in the process of the new McLaren style of technical heads being divided and hoping that Alpine will be able to turn a corner. Whilst Ocon is looking likely to bail on Alpine, Pierre, I think, is doubling down. He's not going anywhere, in my opinion. And it's all got something to do with a certain sponsor that has joined the French team. And uh, watch what I'm about to say. And yes, I know, talking about watch sponsors, that segue was terrible, and why should we care about a watch sponsor? Well, hear me out. The company H. Moser, or however you pronounce it, have recently joined Alpine as a sponsor. And, what is supporting my argument, they partnered up with Pierre as a partner in his own right. Him being their first ever partner. This is the first time they are sort of using brand ambassadors in the way that we are more accustomed to. You know, how drivers have individual sponsors and then they bring them to the team and then their logos are on the car. I know it doesn't sound that exciting talking about sponsors, but when you've got somebody who is affiliated with a sponsor, not just with the team, but in their own right, it gives me the impression that this connection that Gasly has with Alpine is only getting stronger. And Pierre 
is more than willing to wait out the clock, either because he's got no other option, or instead he's seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, that things could be looking pretty rosy so long as he just gives the team a couple of seasons to get their act together. With H. Moser supporting both Alpine and Gasly, this signals to me that the pairing is not in signs of collapse and is in fact strengthening to the point where Pierre is doing what he is doing with Alpha Tauri. Only this time there is a stronger connection being formed because it's quite clear that once again he is becoming the de facto leader of a team. But there is a difference here at Alpine than there was at Alpha Tauri because, put simply, AlphaTauri was a secondary team to Red Bull, whereas Alpine, despite their woeful performance as of late, is a works team. And that is the crucial thing that Pierre sees and has faith in that Alpine can do the goods, as the fact is they are a manufacturer team. Granted, this is Renault we're talking about here, they're not exactly setting the world alight, but they do share the same rarefied atmosphere that the likes of Ferrari, Mercedes, and now technically Red Bull with their Urbita outfit. They are one of the few teams that can actually boast that they have the keys to the engine of prosperity even though the keys to them don't look particularly uh, lustrous right now. And it's going to become a little bit more crowded with the likes of Honda re 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 turning. And then of course we've got Audi joining the fray in a couple of years, so it might not have as much appeal in a couple of years time, but right now, being at a works team in the eyes of Pierre Gasly is looking like the better bet instead of being with a customer team where certain things are sort of limited. Gasly states it's vitally important to be part of one, as he says right here. Ahem. I've been on both sides of being with Alfa Tauri and Honda and Renault when I started in 2017, and obviously the ceiling is higher. There's no limit when you're a manufacturer. You can just set your own limits and develop and invest as much as you want. So I do see that benefit from being a manufacturer in Alpine, and obviously funding is not the issue. That's why I do believe there is no reason and there is no limit to ourselves and the way we're going to approach the future. What Gasly is saying here makes perfect sense because he has experienced what it's like from both sides of the fence. He's experienced being part of a works team at Red Bull Senior Team for a brief period and the 2018 Honda Toro Rosso experimental year and being part of a customer team, also Toro Rosso and then Alfa Tauri. In his mind, the season of 2018, which was technically his first full year of Formula One, was a really fascinating year for him to be part of a team, because Honda was starting to realise that, in the wake of their relationship and partnership with McLaren, that, hey, they could produce a car that was fairly decent with an engine that was perfectly acceptable even though it did have its share of reliability issues, but they were also working with a team that didn't hate them and blamed them for absolutely everything. That was a little bit of an existential crisis that McLaren had in 2018, when they realised that a lot of their faults had something to do with their car, not necessarily the power unit. But that period for Honda was really, really important, and Gasly was in the middle of it. And considering that he scored 29 of the 33 points that Toro Rosso scored that year, he was pretty much the team leader since Brendan Hartley wasn't really making waves, and then he ultimately got booted out. And that's how Gasly has positioned himself ever since and was reinforced even more so when he got booted back down to Toro Rosso after his time at Red Bull was cut short. Pierre Gasly has sort of positioned himself as a team leader of the lower teams, and that was mainly out of necessity. He kind of had to do that. And yeah, I don't really see him in the same air as Carlos Sainz in that regard, because I view Carlos Sainz as a really good team leader. He's very smart, quick on his toes, and he does have the prerequisite speed. Pierre Gasly though, I feel like he's really not had the opportunity to be in a top tier car where he can go for wins and podiums on the regular. I'd love to see it, and I think if he were partnering the likes of the Claret Ferrari, he could make that happen. But again, we've really not seen him have the opportunity to do so. Sort of like what we saw with Checo for the longest time before he got the plum at Red Bull. Which is unfortunate because he sort of indirectly took that from the likes of Gasly. If he decided to be really stubborn and decide not to become a team leader, he probably would not be in the sport anymore. And that would be a crying shame. With the promotion of Alex Albon and then the acquisition of Checo, that Gasly was not going to be promoted back to the top team no matter what he did. You bag a win in Italy, which is effectively the team's home circuit, and then you almost get the team fifth place in 2021 along with the help of Yuki Tsunoda? No, not good enough. Clearly, Gasly had done irreparable damage, which meant that he was not going to get a second bite at the apple 
at the Red Bull team, so thusly, he would just have to make do and lead the squad of Alpha Tauri, with Helmut Marko repositioning himself saying, oh no, 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 we want Gasly to remain at that team because he's really good with developing and helping out Yuki Tsunoda as he then becomes the next prospect of Red Bull. So quite frankly, Gasly just had to like it or lump it. And to be fair, Alpha Tauri in 2020 and 2021, they were fine, they weren't all that bad, especially in 2021. They looked likely to really get the jump on Alpine, which is ironically where he went to, but then they were not fine in the brand new regulations when in 2022 they slumped all the way back down to ninth and only beat Williams and that was a big problem and probably the time for Gasly to say yeah I can't wait any longer oh look at that there's some contract shenanigans going on at Alpine it's a French team it's a works team as I've just stated earlier I'll go over there instead it proved to be the right call as Alpine were stronger than Alpha Tauri in 2023 but that isn't really saying much but Gasly's justification for his words is that despite the struggles that Alpine are dealing with right now he has managed to find himself in a position where he is not only driving for a full-on works operation but he's also becoming increasingly the guy in charge of said works team when it comes to the ones on track. Over the course of 2023, I was starting to see more and more words from the likes of Pierre that were sort of along the lines of we and us. He was sort of bringing himself into the Alpine fold. He was speaking on behalf of the team, whether they were doing well or whether they were not doing so well. He was bringing everybody into the fold and speaking as if he were the team leader. Whereas I was seeing more and more throughout 2023 of Esteban Ocon talking more about the me and the I. He was mainly racing his own race. And that was starting to give me the impression that the balance of power was shifting slowly over to the likes of Pierre because he was playing the long game, he was playing the team game. Whereas at that time, because of the little fractious tensions we all had expected with the likes of Ocon and Gasly, Ocon was mainly driving out of his skin to try and prove a point. As we saw at Las Vegas, when he did go against team orders and got fourth place in Vegas. And okay, sure, he got a better result and thusly proved the team wrong. Credit where credit is due. He drove very well that day. But there was a lot of tension going on, and especially at the time when Alpine was going through a major structural reshift. They just sacked Sapnauer. They'd just gotten over the fact they'd lost Alonso and Piastri. They really did not need any fractious tensions, especially since they almost got through the entire year without a major crash between those two when everybody expected that to happen. Just Please don't do that, Ocon. Don't get them in a jitter. On top of that, I really feel like options for 2025 for Pierre Gasly are thin on the ground. Now, I'm not saying that he's a bad driver or that no other team wants him. There are no real big openings for Pierre Gasly to really jam himself into in the top four roster. Except, of course, the likes of the Mercedes seat, which is currently vacant. But as you probably might be aware, there are quite a few people that are lining themselves up for that seat, which are probably seen as better bets than the likes of Pierre. Sure, Pierre is good, but if you've got Carlos Sainz available, you've got Fernando Alonso available, and if you really want to be crazy, Max Verstappen potentially available, at least as what Toto is saying, then I do think Pierre sort of gets bumped down the priority list. I know it's harsh, but that's just the reality, really. Yes, Pierre is fast enough and smart enough to be an F1, but the options for him presently are not all that prosperous, and as he says, being in a works team has a higher ceiling in terms of scope and potential. He's right in a way. It may not seem obvious right now that Alpine can easily fix these things, but they do have a works operation under their bonnet. They have the support of Renault, at least for the time being, and seemingly they are not short on cash because last year they did turn a profit. It wasn't a very big profit, but considering that not all that long ago, it would be a miracle for a lower Formula 1 team to score a profit or even just a tiny little loss. The cost cap has had its benefits in making sure that all 10 teams in Formula 1 are in rude health or at least they are not bleeding money. Not to mention all of the added investment from external sources and celebrities has been dedicated to specifically giving the team the capital they need to update their wares and make things happen. As far as I see it, I reckon that Gasly feels that it's worth sticking around at Alpine and just see what happens in the medium term. He is fully aware that things are not going to be changing overnight, and he's also aware that 2024 might not see what we saw with McLaren last year, where they suddenly turned a corner and then eventually became the second fastest team in the second half of the season. But he trusts the process. He trusts that the team can turn this all around if they're given just that little bit more time. This is the most important thing, my friend, is that Pierre is being patient. He is willing to wait out the clock and see what happens with the team. He has trust in them, and trust in Formula 1 is a very big deal. 
if the workers of Alpine look to Pierre Gasly and he says, I believe in you, I know you can do this, let's work on this together, that's going to make people motivated and go, hey, Pierre's backing us, this is fantastic, okay, we'll make this happen. But when you get Ocon saying, oh, I have strong links with Mercedes, I believe I have a chance with them, that's just saying, yeah, yeah you don't have strong feelings about their future and that yeah you've had enough and after having a long relationship with that team saying that Ocon is looking likely to go even though that team gave him an opportunity to get back into Formula One yeah that's not all that great I'm not trying to be an Ocon hater but if you just look at that what I've just said you know you can tell which one is the most dependable and besides Pierre is quite circumspect that upgrades won't be forthcoming but he trusts the process and that the team is not strapped for cash but going through a huge overhaul of systemic workflows I am well aware that maybe a chance at a top four team could come Gasly's way and he would be a fool not to take it any team from the lower ranks getting a chance at the top table they'll take it absolutely but I really don't see that happening so therefore, I think Pierre doesn't think that's happening either. So right now, all you got to do is try and cement yourself in Formula One with a team that does have a long term history in the sport. Um, like I mentioned in my video the other day with Lewis Hamilton about quitting. The idea of being in Formula One is better than not being in Formula One. Sure, it's the slowest car on the grid currently, but it's still on the grid. And therefore, you are still in the public eye and therefore you are still somewhat credible in the sport. So all of this positive sentiment from Pierre Gasly is doing him wonders in terms of cementing himself at Alpine and getting a contract extension should he not get anything else. Because the way I see it, he saw exactly what was happening when Red Bull in 2019 were surrounding themselves and circling themselves around Max Verstappen when the Honda partnership with Red Bull was looking likely to bag themselves a few more wins than it was with Renault. Why don't you just try and do the same thing at Renault and Alpine? They're a works team. They're going through a little bit of a crisis right now, but they could easily fix it because, I mean, look at 2020. They looked really, really solid there. They were looking likely to get fourth place as they were in 2018. They could be up there, but then they fell short. But who knows, 2026, we might see an upset where Renault and Alpine find themselves right back where they used to be, back in fourth or fifth place. Yes, it's not exactly setting the world alight, but they might easily be really competitive again. Renault might have pulled a blinder with the power unit. They might have found some aerodynamic tweak that sends them right back up the grid again. I mean, stranger things have happened, of course. So all of the drivers that are currently having contracts up for renewal are going to be looking very carefully as to which team they should really back. Maybe right now Alpine could be pulling a blinder, but the fact that they are blindly at the back at the moment, most teams would not really be paying much attention. So maybe we might see a situation where Pierre Gasly just decides to just put up with it for a year or two. Just be patient with the 2026 process, working with the likes of maybe Mick Schumacher partnering him or the likes of Jack Doohan. Either driver would be a far more serene approach than the likes of Esteban Ocon just going, fine, I'll stay here then, because he can't find a seat elsewhere. But I do think he will find a seat elsewhere. I'm pegging still Haas. I've rarely seen him be really extremely negative about the team and to the point where saying it was ridiculous, it was terrible. He's always been very uh, diplomatic when it comes to the wording that he uses, whereas his teammate hasn't really done that so much. He still sometimes finds ways of causing trouble where there shouldn't be. And I really feel like at this time when Alpine are going through all of this, they really do not need more moments like they saw in Vegas where things could be at risk, especially when they're in a situation when points are extremely rare. You might get a situation where one driver is in 10th, one is in 11th, who's going to get that point? and then that might lead to utter calamity when neither of them scores a point. It's looking increasingly likely that Ocon is casting his net out to multiple teams out there with the hope that he can score a seat at a team with better prospects in the medium term, which is why some outlets tout him being a favourite for the likes of the Audi project, which is not something I had on my bingo card. In my eyes, Ocon is a quick driver and he can be quick on his day, but at the same time he can fly off the handle and he can cause some friction with teammates where there needn't be which is something, again, the team does not need right now. So the battle between them this year doesn't really matter so much since Gasly is probably in the pound seat to stay simply because he's acting like the stalwart loyal figurehead. Whilst Ocon, who had been that up until now, is, again, looking out there and away from the team. But when did this start? When did I start thinking that Pierre Gasly was pulling a masterstroke of a move to secure his future at a works team, albeit one that isn't exactly setting the world alight? Well, it all had something to do with the Brazilian Grand Prix and something I elaborate on further in this video here, which I'm still proud of, and it's caused a lot of debate, so uh, go see it for yourself.